Although the majority of aftermarket stereos today have Bluetooth built in, there's a small minority that don't have it. It also hasn't been a standard feature on new vehicles for that long. And a lot of you guys don't have brand new cars. Some of you are early 2000s, late 90s, and most of those cars don't have Bluetooth built in. However, the majority of them have auxiliary and some even have USB and others have both. In this video, we're going to show you with some new adapters how to get Bluetooth for your stereo that does not have built-in Bluetooth. And this doesn't only apply to cars and car stereos. You can use this for an own boombox, an old stereo system, whatever, as long as it has an aux input or USB. The last Bluetooth adapter was the Sony RMX7BT. It was a little more advanced than the stuff I'm gonna show you today, so go ahead and click the card up top, link in the bio to check that video out and that product out. Everything I'm gonna show you in this video is either gonna send a Bluetooth signal to the auxiliary input or the USB port on your radio. The first one I'm gonna show you is for your USB port. This is the Naxa NAB4003. What you'll do is plug this into the USB port on your stereo. The port gives it power. And then you pair your phone to this in your Bluetooth settings on your phone. This one's really easy to connect and it's very convenient. Again, there's no other cables, no power cables. It gets the USB power from the port. However, there's a downside. There's a delay. It's about 20 to 22 seconds. So when you press play on a song, it'll take about 20 seconds to play. And then if you want to pause, it'll take 20 seconds to pause. And if you want to change to another song, it will take about 20 seconds again to change to that song. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in the Naxa NAB into my USB port. Next step, let's go into my Bluetooth settings and connect to it. Wait for it to pop up. And that's it right there. No password required or anything. All right, now let's go into the USB source of my stereo and see we got the Naxa to come up. Now let's go ahead and play a song. So I have some stuff, some copyright free music that I downloaded. And so I hit play. And as you can see on my phone, the song is progressing. And we have the volume up on my radio, the volume up on my phone. And here's that delay I was telling you about. So let's go ahead and we'll wait for it to play, see how long it takes. I'm getting a little impatient, so let's... Oh, there we go. So that took, what, 30 seconds? So the audio sounds pretty good, but again, that delay is pretty harsh. So let's, let's see how long it takes to change songs. So we'll go ahead and play this song instead. The other one stopped. Because otherwise, if, if this was on like Spotify or a playlist in your iTunes, then the song would keep playing, but I'm in Google Drive playing some copyrighted free music, so it's gonna stop that song. Otherwise, it would keep playing the other song. Every time I want to give up, <laughs> it plays. So that took a little while. Again, the audio is not horrible, but uh, when I tested it with Spotify, it was a little faster. The delay was only about 20 seconds. Can't play Spotify music on YouTube or else we'll get taken down, so you just have to take my word for it. Obviously, it's pretty annoying at first getting used to it, but you gotta think about what this little thing's doing. It's taking the wireless Bluetooth signal and transferring it through the USB port, so there's obviously some compression going on. If you don't have an auxiliary input and you don't have Bluetooth on your stereo, it's a decent solution. However, if you're an irritable person and don't have patience, you'll probably end up throwing it out the window. All right, it's not that bad, but you know, it takes a little getting used to. The rest are going to be for the auxiliary inputs. And we're gonna start with these micro Bluetooth adapters. They come in black and silver and feature an auxiliary jack. They both require USB power and they both come with a power cable. So it's a micro USB to USB and all you do is plug it into the back. Plug USB into your USB port and the auxiliary into your auxiliary. And this right here is the power and pairing button. Once you're plugged in and powered up to both the auxiliary and the USB port of your stereo, you'll hold down that button for six seconds to turn it on. And then you'll be able to pair your smartphone with it. These both worked great. I had no problem pairing them. Didn't even have to enter a password. They had an optional password in case one came up, but it's just zero, 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 zero. The sound quality was solid. Had no problem transferring songs, no delay. And they're very easy to connect and use. And they also don't take up a lot of space. They're tiny. 
Personally, I like a sure thing, so let's go ahead and try one of the uh, Claris micro Bluetooth receivers. So again, pretty easy. Just go ahead and plug it right into the aux input and USB for power. And we should see the blue button. So, I mean, yeah, so the button, the power button has illuminated. So we're gonna hold that down. Okay, again, we're gonna go into my Bluetooth settings and we're gonna connect with this receiver. There it is, the BTR005. All right, now let's go into my aux source, pick a song, Google Drive. Right away we're going. The audio sounds pretty good. No delay. Let's go ahead and pick another song. The audio sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and pick another song. No delay. Sounds solid. Obviously we're going to get the same exact results with this one, it's just a different color. The next one is also a Claris Micro Bluetooth receiver. However, you can clearly see there's no built-in auxiliary jack, but it also requires USB power. Not only does it come with and require the USB charger for power like the previous two, it also comes with an auxiliary extension. So obviously you'll plug the auxiliary extension into the aux input and the USB charger into the USB port. And the results were the same as the previous two receivers. The audio sounded great, there was no delay, easy to use, it's just there's an additional cable. All right, let's go with another sure thing. I have a pretty good feeling about this guy. This is the version of those Claris Bluetooth receivers that does not have the built-in jack, instead comes with the auxiliary extension. So let's go ahead and plug this bad boy in. Again, auxiliary to auxiliary, USB power. And we're plugged in, now let's check out that power and Bluetooth connect button. So we got, we're receiving power, let's hold it down. The flashing blue means we're ready to pair our Bluetooth device. So we'll go back into our Bluetooth settings and here is the new receiver. Let's connect to it. And we're connected. Go back into Google Drive. Start the track over. Go into our auxiliary input. Let's turn the volume up and play. Right away. Sounds pretty good too. And the cool thing about these receivers, since they receive USB power, you don't actually have to have a USB port. You can use your cigarette lighter with a USB adapter for power instead, if all you have is the auxiliary input. So you don't need both USB and auxiliary to use these adapters. An adapter on the cigarette lighter plug will work just fine for power. And all three of the Claris receivers have internal batteries that can run without the USB power connected for up to eight hours when fully charged. The final two receivers are by Bueller. The first one is the BT-USB. And these are designed to be installed behind the dash, behind the stereo, out of view. So the BT-USB receiver requires USB power and has an auxiliary output for your auxiliary input on your stereo. And like the others, it's also very easy to pair and the audio sounds great. But another cool part about this one is it also has the option of being connected with RCAs. So instead, if your source has RCA inputs instead of an auxiliary input, you just connect the RCA adapters and the same thing happens. You'll get the Bluetooth to the RCA input. And the other Bueller is the BT-12V. The only difference between these two is obvious. This is USB power, this is 12 volt power. The BT-12V also has the option of using RCAs instead of the auxiliary. All right, so the Buellers, the BT-USB and the BT-12V again are more designed to go inside the dash, behind the radio, out of view, but I'm not taking my car apart, I'm not taking the dash apart, let's just go ahead and do this easy and quick. And I won't be using the RCAs for this, I'm just gonna use the auxiliary jack, so I'll disconnect the adapter. Like usual, auxiliary to auxiliary, USB for power. And we got the receiver right here. All right, into our Bluetooth settings, we'll pair with the new receiver, it's called Sky International. But it is a Bueller adapt. 
go into Google Drive to pick a track. Let's play something else. And right away we got music. This one sounds really good, pretty high quality. And you can see our frequency response that we picked up on this with pink noise was pretty close and similar to the Sony RMX7BT, very flat. Yeah, sounds great. All right, that's it guys. Hopefully this helps some of you out there that need Bluetooth or want Bluetooth and can't figure out how to get it in your car or at home for your stereo or whatever. These are all easy, affordable solutions and anyone can install them. If you have any questions about any of them, just let me know, leave a comment below. I put the links for all of these Bluetooth receivers in the bio of the video below. Be sure to check out qualitymobilevideo.com for all of your car audio and video gear. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, like this video, join the conversation, follow us on Instagram at qualitymobilevideo, and thanks for watching. Thank you.